welcome to my podcast, Light and Dove Knits. My name is Whitney, and this is a knitting and crochet podcast. And this is episode six. Thank you so much for dropping by. Thank you to thank you so much for returning viewers. I'm so glad that you came back and continue watching my my podcast. And I also want to thank and welcome to new viewers and who wants to check out my podcast. Thank you for dropping by. I hope you like it, and I hope you subscribe and like it. But Welcome. I know it's been a long time since I last podcasted. I think it was just, it's been a month, but you know, life, it's been busy. I have two kids, so like I said before in prior podcasts, but I, I'm pretty a busy mom. Everything's good. <laughs> I'm vaccinated. I'm fully vaccinated. It's been a couple weeks since my second shot. Yeah, I'm happy. I had no symptoms whatsoever. I was, um, I did have a sore arm, but other than that, I didn't, I never had the other symptoms like other people have but yeah it's been two weeks i'm fully vaccinated <laughs> so but yay i'm vaccinated get your shot but it's been good I, um just so you know i i also live in california i live in la and it's been quite hot <laughs> it's already feels like summer officially it's going to be june 20th i believe but it already feels like it's summer my ac is already turning on early in the morning so yeah it's it's going to be a hot summer and I hate the heat. But we haven't been enjoying, as a family, we've been enjoying enjoying going to the LA Arboretum. It's in in Arcadia, but a bunch of trees. It's a, um, it's a nice lot, like it's a big place. And just to go out in nature, there's a bunch of um, hummingbirds you can see, a lot of bees, which I have to be careful. I'm allergic to, to bee venom. Um, but there's a lot of peacocks roaming around the area, which my, oldest daughter she loves she's kind of terrified of terrified of him when they get really close but other than that she keeps her distance and she loves them she talks about them all the time i mean all the time all day <laughs> but you know that's little ones they just repeat 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 <laughs> no matter what but, but i'm just glad she enjoys it she enjoys the rock the our walks because there's also a big waterfall as well and there's a bunch of turtles and fish so she loves it. I love it. It's, it's just really nice just to get out of the house. And um, there's uh, during the week, there's not a lot of people there. So it's really nice to just be away from people. <laughs> Six feet, of course, but but it's really nice. But yeah, I guess I can tell you what are my projects, what I'm working on. So like I said before, I have uh, my, this segment is probably not going to be here for too long because my knits from the past is uh, dwindling. And I feel like I have one more to show for a future episode, but I just don't remember what it was. If not, this might be the last one, but we'll see. Who knows? <laughs> I also want to try to keep this video short. I know last time I said I hope to make it a maximum of 30 minutes, but my last episode went over like almost an hour, I think. 15 minutes, I think. Um, so I'm going to try my best. But I can't promise you anything. Apparently I'm a liar. <laughs> like a liar. <laughs> so I'll try my best. Anyways. So my, this segment is called Knits of the Past. So this Knits from the Past, I think I made it. And I want to say, let me see, let me do the math. Um, I don't remember the exact date. It has been quite some time. I want to say 10 years, either 10, 12 years, around that. It's been a long time since I've made this project. Here's the picture. His name is Dead Pirate Sam. You know, it kind of awfully looks like our fam the famous pirate that we know from Pirates of the Caribbean, uh, <laughs> Captain Jack Sparrow. <laughs> but due to copyrights and everything, it's uh, Dead Pirate Sam. But I really enjoyed this uh, crochet pattern by Amy Schimmel via Interweave. I got it from Interweave. I didn't get it from Ravelry or anything else, but I did look it up on Interweave. I just looked up Captain Jack Sparrow doll, and that's what just came up. Mind you, it was 12 years ago, so some of the details... <laughs> It's kind of hazy, so I can't give you much because <laughs> um, it's been a long time. <laughs> but I did make this for my very best friend, Janessa. Hi, Janessa. I hope you're watching. <laughs> we were best friends since high school. Well, she came to my high school when we were both in junior year. So that was the first time. We were, we met, but we really clicked when we were in senior year. Ever since then, we were just the best of friends. So, But I know growing up, she loved Captain Jack Sparrow. She loved Pirates of the Caribbean, which is a good movie. I haven't seen those movies in, the year, in years but i love those movies too but she loved Jack captain jack sparrow and i thought for her birthday um <laughs> i'm laughing because i'll tell you in a minute <laughs> for her birthday i wanted to make her a, a doll and i wanted to give her give it to her for her for a birthday but i tried to make it as fast as i could but it was kind of complicated mm, some parts not all but 
I ended up giving it to her the next birthday, but I gave it to her eventually. <laughs> I think I used, for the yarn, I think I used Red Super Saver, Red Heart Super Saver yarn. Um, again, it's been a long time, so I'm not 100% sure. Um, it did ask for worsted weight, so I'm guessing it was Red Heart, and that's what usually I, I got before I found out there were small yarn businesses. <laughs> so I'm guessing that. And the hooks I used were size E and F. Again, I made it for my best friend and how I presented it to her. Like we've been uh, Disney pass holders for a long time. Um, well, not since uh, a couple years ago, we let them expire, but we were consistently going to Disneyland. And, but we went to see California, or went to go to California Adventure. And I think it was actually World of Color at the end of it. And I actually put the doll like behind her, behind her shoulder and, and kind of surprised her. And yeah, she really, really loved it. And I also um, put a, I left a little note. I wished her happy, I think I, I wished her a happy birthday, but, but like in a little tiny paper and I rolled it up like if it was like a map and I put it in his belt. <laughs> so I thought that was a cool idea. But yeah, she loved it. And, and it, was, it was a really fun project, except the hair. The hair was really, really complicated because I had to use, I had to string them in individually into the scalp, pretty much. I don't know how I did it because it's been a long time. I still have a pattern somewhere, but yeah. But it was a good project. It was nice. I'm pretty proud of it. And I'm really happy. I'm really glad that my best friend loves it too. And she still has it. I'm gonna take a sippy sip. I love all the yarn on the llama's head. It's so cute. So I guess I'll move on to finished objects. Okay, so I got a request to make a hat for some, for a couple people. And I think they turned out okay. It's called, the pattern is called Warm Wish by Drops Design. So here's one of them. It was a simple um, uh, one by one pattern. And it's actually really, really comfy, actually. I'll tell you why in a minute. But I also uh, made another one of the same, same pattern, but different color. She wanted um, a green and black to represent her son's like football team, I believe, I think. But, and she said to do whatever, whatever color I wanted or whatever design I wanted, but I kept it simple and I thought that was okay. And she liked it. So, so I'm giving that to her soon. So the yarn that I did, I made it with was a Lion Brand Wool Ease. That's obviously black and forest heather, which I actually, this yarn is what I want. I want to use for the pattern that I, that's by Andrea Maori. I don't know about you. Um, I don't know if you have, if you feel this way, but I felt like while I was knitting it up, cause I did it a couple times cause I, um, cause I wasn't satisfied with the yarn because I feel like when I was knitting up with it, I, it felt like more of a DK weight yarn, not a worsted cause it's labeled worsted. But when I was knitting it up, I felt like I wasn't hitting gauge. Maybe I could have just gone larger needles larger needle size, but I also tested it out with my, um, my, my wraps per inch tool and it was. And I did it a couple times to make sure I was correct. And it was coming, coming out as a DK weight. So I don't know if I'm going crazy or her gauging it wrong or something, but do you find Lion Brand Woolies to be a DK weight? Or maybe it's just the yarn that I had right now. I'm not sure, but, but cause like I actually doubled it cause this pattern was asking for, I think a bulky weight, I believe. I think I had another pattern actually. And then, um, use this one. Cause then when I was, I used my wraps per inch tool, it was actually coming up bulky. So, so I don't know. And this pattern is for a bulky weight and then and measuring it with my WPI tool, it was coming out as bulky, but it feels really squishy. I liked how I like the, the ribbing. But yeah. Let me know in the comments if you feel the same way about Lion Brand, I, which I liked, I like Lion Brand, but just, I felt like it was a worsted weight, <laughs> but very, very squishy. I like it. I did use a US size 10, which is a six millimeter needle, which I actually use my clovers, my clovers, uh, I think it's clovers. Mm, clovers. My, it's the bam, I use the bamboo needles, bam, my bamboo interchangeable needles. I'll put it down below what needles they are. Cause I, I, I want to say, I don't want to say it wrong, wrong. So I put it, I'll put it down in the description. One finished object. And I want to backtrack a little bit cause I completely forgot <laughs> that if you haven't followed me yet, you can follow me on my Facebook or Instagram. I'm mostly, I, I mostly act more active on Instagram. So I'll put all the info down here. It's uh, at Light Dove Knits or on Facebook, Light and Dove Knits. And you can also email me if you like, if you have any questions or um, questions, comments, concerns. <laughs> um, I have put my email down below as well in the description box. Moving on. Okay, for my second, 
finished objects. You got a really close up to my face, didn't you? <laughs> okay, I've been really like lately. I've been really busy. I've been trying to catch up on all my orders because I do I do commissions and commission work, essentially just family friends who um, family and friends, family friends who request some stuff from me because they they love my work. They they know like, I love what I do, which I do. Um, but I feel like I I have been. I had a lot of requests, so I'm, I'm catching up. I'm trying to catch up. Some projects are taking longer than others, or you know, yarn, I need to get yarn, and it's taking longer for um, to get them, so some people are waiting on their orders, but I'm trying my best. <laughs> um, you're gonna get them eventually, friends and family. But I also have two little ones, too, which they take up m most of my time, since they're more active. But in between, I try to make as much uh, things as possible. There was one request, which is funny, I got two people who requested these um, from me earlier this year. These mittens <laughs> were very popular. Why? Because of Bernie Sanders. <laughs> because of that. Because of Bernie Sanders, and he became a meme, and it's an amazing meme of him just the gloves, and it was probably really cold. So he was nice and warm and bundled up. Okay. <laughs> but some I got some people requesting for the Bernie Sanders gloves, and here they are. <laughs> they came out really, really good. I'm actually really excited about how they turn out. This is actually my second pair of gloves I've ever done. I'll show you my other finished project. I wanted to save it the best for last. Not that these are the best, but you'll see why in a minute when I show them to you. But yeah, this is the second pair of gloves I ever did and color the second time I did color work. I feel like I did color work before, but not the, as this intricate. This is for adult, adult large, so they are, my fingers are like right here. The thumb, you can see the dent. This pattern is by by Emily O'Brien. Um, it is free if you want your own set of <laughs> Bernie gloves. I suggest you go there. I'll put a link down below. All the links that I'm going to show you are going to be down in the description box in case you want to end up, end up or crochet your own projects of, of whatever I'm going to talk about today. The yarn I used was a Big Twist yarn by uh, from Joanne's. A Big Twist. It's in chocolate brown. Um, camel and white. I used the beige one, like that tan color. I used a uh, red heart super saver buff because I had it in my in my. Um, it's getting hot. My hands are hot already. Um, I already had it in my stash. I just need to wash them, and they'll be good to go. I did use needles U.S. size three and five, three point twenty five millimeters and three point seventy five millimeters respectively. Um, yeah, it was really nice. For some reason, I could not get the pattern, <laughs> but it took me a while. But then once I, all of a sudden it clicked and then it was, I breezed on through. <laughs> it was a really easy gloves to knit up. Okay, well, the designer, Emily O'Brien, actually, she, for my last episode, episode four, wait, five? <laughs> I don't remember the count. I think it's five, but I'll put it, I'll link it up here so you can check it out. But I have a Haunted Mansion yarn that I, I got it specifically for that pattern. And at the time of the episode, I could not remember or the designer or what the name was called. But luckily, um, someone that I met through a, um, a, a podcast that I watched, her, um, Caitlin, I'm very bad with names and very bad, at least right now on the spot, but I put her podcast down below. It's the, the Cozy Moth Knits, I believe, and she hosts like a, a monthly meetup a once a month via Zoom. And I met a couple of people through there. If anyone's watching, hi. <laughs> Um, particularly um, a shout out to Valerie because she's the one that messaged me asking me if it was Emily O'Brien and, and and I was like yes that's the designer that's the um, uh, there's a sock pattern that I want from her uh, get from her and um, for these socks and it's called Happy Hunts and um, so yeah so I can't wait to, to knit those up so that's one of my future knits down the line whenever I can <laughs> knit anyways but yeah, I urge you to check out those patterns for Emily O'Brien yeah those are my Bernie Mittens, and I'll also be talking about it in a little bit too. Okay, on to my next project I'm, I worked on. I'm really, actually, I'm, I'm, I love, I saved the best for last. Not like the, the others are not the best, but I'm just very proud of myself because one, I don't know if you follow me on Instagram, but I have my, my New Year goals. I have eight goals. I think they put up to 10, 10 actually, because I, um, I want to embroider and I want to sew. So I, those, I have 10 goals this year. But I've never done color work before, at least not this complicated. And looking at it, I'm like, I'd go big or go home, right? I don't know, it just seems complex. And especially for a beginner like me, um, why would I choose this pattern? I don't know, but 
<laughs> I wanted to challenge, but I think I did it okay. Um, these are called the hay. <laughs> and the name is awesome too. I suggest you uh, go to this uh, this uh, designer's Etsy page because she has a lot of a lot of puns and a lot of and some curse words too. <laughs> but you see what I mean. So these are called hay biatch mittens. <laughs> so he's this is the pair. So here's the first one. See here's the B. I know like all the edges I it could be um they're not as smooth. Like I said, this was the first time doing color work, so I was trying to learn how to tension. My first glove was probably a little bit more tight than the second one, since my second one, I, I knew what I learned from the first one. So yeah, but here's one. Here's the glove, or the cuff, the beehive. It's just a wonderful design, and the bees. And then the gloves, and then here's the second one. Same thing, but with the arch, <laughs> with the bee arch. And then here's the back. I love the back of these because of the honeycombs. But yeah, I'm really, really proud of these. Biatch. Sorry if there's kids. Hopefully there's no kids <laughs> in your listening to this right now. The thumb is a little bit tight. I told my sister I can, um, I can redo if she wants. I mean, I'm, I'm most likely she won't wear them, but I told her to put maybe like, put them in like a, in a little picture frame type of thing where it's like a shadow box where she can uh, I don't know, display them somehow. But I did make them for my sister. Um, she she loves our uh, our family thing. We always uh, when we grew up, we had our little um, things that we liked. Hers was bees, and mine mine is a ladybug. So my parents always give us things that are either bee related or ladybug related. So I thought this was since I saw these, um, I thought these are perfect for my sister. I'm not saying she's like a. <laughs> the B word or anything. I just like because of the pattern and then I thought it was funny. It's our sense of humor too. <laughs> By Drunk Girls Designs. She also has another mittens that's called, um, it's cold as F, but the word, <laughs> I don't want to say it. <laughs> but yeah, I like her stuff. I like her things. So you should check it out. Drunk Girls Designs. And she suggested to use the Knit Picks palette yarn and um, which I did. So the, the yellow one is called the Semolina and the, the darker one is the pumice 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 <laughs> heather <laughs> so yeah it's really soft it is 100% wool so can you have to hand wash these you cannot put them in the wash and dryer or else they felt yeah but I'm really really happy with those um the the designer she used nine inch circulars but I know how to use nine inch circulars but for my first time doing doing color work I'd rather not and I actually changed it to magic loop and it was easy to switch so it doesn't matter but I use size one and two so you use size one for the cuff and size two for the color work it took a little bit of time since it was a it's a fingering weight yarn and also me being the first timer here um it, it was a pretty slow process but I did I didn't it was for her birthday my sister's birthday um, a week later but better late than never I did give it to her I also purchased a couple like bee related things from Target like face masks and uh, I think a Burt's Bees packet for her. And then I put the glove in the box, I put the gloves on the bottom so that way she can see them and <laughs> see it last. <laughs> but she really loved them, she really, she really enjoyed them. She, um, she didn't notice the name at first when I, told, I pointed it out to her, she started laughing, but, but she loved them, I'm glad. <laughs> um, I got them off of Etsy, I don't know if she has a website or anything. I can check later, but I mostly looked, I, it popped up on my Etsy feed, I think. And I clicked on it, bought it, and made them. I'm really happy <laughs> how it turned out. It wasn't a catastrophe. That's it for my finished objects. I'll move on to my whips, my works in progress, for those of you who don't know what that means. <laughs> okay, this one is really a work in progress, like in the beginning stage. Because <laughs> I haven't had time to make it, because I, because like I said before, we go to the LA Arboretum a lot. And there's a lot of peacocks swarming around. Since my daughter loves peacocks, I thought I would make her a little peacock, like a little amigurumi doll. So yeah, this is how far I've got. <laughs> and yeah, this is the top of the head. But yeah, this is how far I got I'm crocheting it. Only like two two rows and that's it. And I also um not knitting it or crocheting it fast enough is because I don't want my daughter to see it yet. 
Because if she sees it and she knows what it is, and if she sees me making it, she'll definitely be all up in my business and sitting in my lap and 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 like brushing me to fix, <laughs> to finish it. So I'm trying to do it when when she's not around, which is rare. Usually at nighttime, but then I'm too tired. It'll it'll it's a fa it'll probably be a fast doll to crochet up. So I'll get it done soon. I did use a size F hook. It didn't ask for a 2.0 millimeter hook, but I went up a size a couple a couple sizes higher. So I went up to a size F, not to the size G that I usually use, but I use a size F. So that'd be a, a better substitute. And I used Super Heart Saver. Actually, funnily enough, this is actually called a Red, Super, a Red Heart Super Saver with Love, I believe, in the peacock colorway. So it works well. And then this one in four, in, I don't remember, because I don't have the tags anymore. <laughs> Lime green type thing for the tail, an accent color for something else, I believe, like a yellow. Vanna's Choice, I had this in my in my stash for a long time, but I'm using it. <laughs> it's a Vanna's Choice in aqua. Also using whites. Yeah, those are all the colors I'm, I'm using. So I can't wait to, to get that done. So the pattern name is called Paco the Peacock <laughs> by Amigurumi Today. So yeah, I just looked up peacock, peacock fat peacock patterns and that was the first one that popped up so I'm, I'm, I'm I can't wait for it to be finished because it, it looks really neat so that's my first or my first whip I want to talk about my second one is the Bernie mittens so I have another friend that requested uh, a, a Bernie's gloves a Bernie mittens as well so this is the cuff of one one of them see how it's magic loop so it's easy and also, I don't think I ever showed you any of my of my progress keep or this one at least. This one's by uh, Woolen Forest. For or her Etsy name is Forest Charms. But if you follow her, I suggest you go biz, uh, watch her podcast. I know recently she said she's gonna take a break from podcasting, so I don't know if she's gonna do them again or not. But it's, but it's good just to, to check out her um, Instagram at least. But yeah, her name is uh, I believe her name is Maria. But yeah, she really does really cute um, progress keepers and and stitch markers. So this is like a uh, little lavender in the bottle. So I have actually a couple more of her um, progress keepers too. I'll show you in a later episode. But anyways, yeah, so this is the cuff. So th with this pattern, you have to use a size three and US size five. Well, size threes, I, some, I'm using it on another project. And so the only other threes, size threes I had were double pointed needles. And if you haven't seen my past episodes, like, I'm not a fan of DPNs. Um, just cause it, it's really fiddly. You're working with a bunch of needles and it's not hard to do, but I don't, I just don't like them. Maybe people like DPNs, people don't like Magic Loop. And I love Magic Loop, whatever you prefer, doesn't matter. But what I, <laughs> I don't like DPNs. <laughs> But I had to use them for the cuffs. I do like the, um, I, I think I knit differently with them because they're much of a tighter, a tighter knit, which I like because when it, um, you wear them, it kind of lo loosens up a bit. I thought it would be easier way since I'm not using them for my, for the main body. I thought it would be good for, to you to save me time on the second glove and just go right into the body of it. So yeah, here's that. Burning Mittens by Emily O'Brien. <laughs> and then... I'm still working on my favorite vanilla socks by Megan and Schmaltz. I, I've done some progress, maybe like four or five rows, <laughs> but that was when, that was like a couple weeks ago when I took my shot and then I was waiting for any reaction. So you know how they have you wait 15, 30 minutes, in my case 30 minutes because of, um, because of my allergies to bees. <laughs> but for, for when I was waiting, I just needed a, a couple rows of the, of the socks. If you want to check them out, check out my other episode. My other whip is also, I'm still working on the, um, on the honey hat by Hannah Fettig. Um, I, I need to get more yarn for that one because I ran out of yarn because I used it for a different project, but, but I don't want to use the same yarn. I'm trying to do a similar color, but different, a different brand. I'm not sure if I'm a big fan of the big twist yarn from a Joann's, but we'll see. So that's it for all of my projects that I'm doing. But as for acquisitions, this one just came in the mail i'm so excited for this it was a pre-order so here's the her tag a teeny button studios but it's a little fox with a yarn in, in its mouth yeah, it's really cute but yeah this so the dyer teeny button studios um she was doing a golden girls collection i love the golden girls i've watched it so many times i recite the lines all the time my husband and i are big fans I'm actually re-watching it right now. I listened to a Golden Girls podcast, which I suggest you listen to it. <laughs> it's called um, Let Them Eat Cheesecake. 
I, I listen to them on Spotify. I think you, they, you can listen to them on um, Spotify and Apple, probably where you get your podcast. But anyways, she was doing a Golden Girl po- uh, Golden Girl collection, and I have to had to get it get it. Um, and this one's really really pretty. It's called "Thank You for Being a Friend." Is that so pretty? See all the beachy tones, little purple, magenta type of color. Then you get lighter. And even like a bluish, this part looks like it's black, but there's some little green in it. It's so, so pretty. I can't wait to, to knit it up. But yeah, it is a soft sock, fingering weight, 75 superwash merino, 25% nylon, and I love it. If you have any suggestions on what I should, it is 40, 463 yards and 100 grams, so... Do you think I should wait it out to make a shawl with it or a shirt or should I make socks with it? What do you think? Or a shawl? I'm not sure. So yeah, what do you think I should do? Please leave a comment. That'd be nice. <laughs> so yeah, that's that one. Another acquisition that I got was from Amazon and um, I don't know where it's at. It's somewhere around my house, but I can't find it. <laughs> but I want to learn how to embroider. I know how to cross stitch. Cross stitching is fun. I like to cross stitch and I never thought I would like embroidery. But I did buy an Am- uh, no, Amazon. I did from Amazon. I brought a uh, an uh, embroidery kit. I'll put a picture up in here so like, at least you can see. But it's by Louise Maley's beginner embroidery kit. I'll put the link down below just in case you want to check it out. But yeah, I want to learn how to embroider. Some things I have in mind for the future in regards to my sewing projects. So I don't know. We'll see. We'll see what happens. But I do want to learn how to embroider. See if I like it or not. <laughs> but I think it would be fun to learn. I'm also learning how to do calligraphy. I haven't started my, my practice, I haven't practiced yet, but I want to start doing calligraphy. So yeah, so hopefully that goes well. I'll be a new, a new, a new skill. So hopefully it goes well. <laughs> and yeah, and then my third acquisition that I got, I was actually watching a recent uh, a podcast. I forgot who suggested it. Oh no, I think I was watching Stress Knits podcast. Um, I'm watching like old episodes. I have... <laughs> I like to, when I watch a podcast, I go way back to the very beginning of a podcast and just move my way up to the re- most recent one. So I'm very much, probably some podcasts are like from, that was recorded like six years ago, but I want to make sure I got everything. <laughs> but Stress Knits, the podcast, I forgot her name, but she suggested a lotion for specifically for, for crafters, like knitting and crochet or people. Um, she, there was a lotion that she liked and I wanted to try it out. So I checked out this uh, maker. It's a Happy Hands Cream. I, I really wanted it, the, the podcaster suggested this because it doesn't leave your hands greasy. Because there's some lotions, they leave your hands greasy and it feels like you have something on your hands and then you have to wash them after, then your hands get dry again. <laughs> but these, actually I tried these out and it's not too greasy. I like them. They leave your hands nice and soft, really soft. And I got the eight, it's a, you can either get the bottle or samplers and I got the samplers because like what if you don't like the scent and then you have to return it or something like that but they, it does come she has a bunch of samplers you can try I got the eight cent floral packet the eight or the bouquet floral sample because I love flowery scents particularly my favorite scents from Bath and Body Works is rose and uh, lilac fresh lilacs which I think lilac is going to be my number one because I love that smell and she does have a lilac in here, but I want to save it for last because <laughs> like, what if I don't like the other ones? And if I, yeah, but I'm saving it for last, the uh, best for last. I have rose and, uh, and lilac, but so far I've tried, um, uh, she also gives you another sample. So I had nine in total, but she gave me, I paid for eight, but she gave me another one to sample as well. So it's really nice. I like that. And, um, it was like a high kinth, no high kinth, um, hibiscus and raspberry. I liked it, I like the hibiscus smell, but I don't really care for raspberry that much, so I gave it to my mother-in-law, but it was it, it's a good scent in case if you like the fruity smells. But this one I really like, it's called Highlander, with uh, it's with Heather and Hyacinth. Hy- Hyacinth? But yeah, here's the packet. Yeah, it's really good. I'm gonna put some on right now. Yeah, this one's actually a pretty good one too. But yeah, I highly suggest you uh, check it out. Hmm, sounds really good. But yeah, that's it for acquisitions that I have. Moving on to my fusion knits. Like I said before, I'm, I'm, I'm making a toy fox by Rianne Anderson. Here's that one. It is a paper pattern by Etsy. 
I am having a little bit of trouble with it because I never knitted a doll before. Of course, all of my dolls I did, I did was a um, crochet. But this is my first knitted doll. So I'm having a little bit complicated, especially with the technique on casting on. So it's like, I forgot what it's called, but, um, but it's a new to me technique. So I'm trying my best. So I need to be working with that soon. So that's that. My other future knits is uh, I got a request from someone asking me to do Miles from Spider-Man. A little boy loves uh, Miles Morales, the Spider-Man version. So I'm going to make that. It's by uh, Tanya Smile. She's also the, um, the, the designer who did Wonder Woman. So I like her. I like her dolls. So luckily she had one, had a Miles Morales doll. So I went with her. So I highly suggest if you want to make your own, I highly suggest um, her patterns. And she also has like the whole Captain America, Iron Man, I think. Check her out. And also making, I think it's my fourth episode. I talked about making a Minnie Mouse. Um, this time my mom wants one, but in, um, made one in pink before, but I want to make one, but she wants one in red. So that's my other future knitting. It's by a zombie Gurumi. That's it for my future knits. Yeah, those are three, three things I'm going to work on. Toy Fox, Miles Morales, Minnie Mouse. I mean, I have other projects too. I might stretch it out for the next episode <laughs> so I have content and this is a new segment and also the last segment I mean this is a new segment but that's not gonna be happening again um, but an only segment that's gonna happen in this episode and that's it because it's, it's this is called the lost then found segment because the other day I was looking through some I was looking for something and I came across a big a big bag of yarn. I knew what was inside that, that bag because there there's a specific project that I want to um, use them for because I bought colors for that specific pattern. But I didn't know I had other yarn separate from that pattern in that bag. And a long time ago, maybe three, four years ago, I bought something and then I remember having it. All of a sudden it, it disappeared. I couldn't, I could not figure out where I put it. If I just lost somewhere, we threw it out. Sometimes some stuff ends in the car, we just throw things out. And what if it was in, it was in the in the trash? Because it was yarn, precious yarn, expensive yarn. Well, not expensive yarn, but it wasn't acrylic yarn from Joanne's. <laughs> it was from a yarn store, and so it was really sad about. It was really sad about it until recently, as in a couple weeks ago, I was looking in that bag, I spotted something, and I spotted the yarn that I lost, and now. It has been found, this bundle here. Yeah, so it smells a little bit dusty. <laughs> yeah, I found yarn, <laughs> more yarn. And then there's three minis, very, very cool. So this one, this is uh, Serena. Serena? Yeah, Serena by Manos del Uruguay. It's baby alpaca. So 60% alpaca and 40% cotton. And this one's actually called ethereal. Ethereal? I cannot say words. <laughs> but yeah, it's really pretty and really, really soft. Oh, by being in a bag all these years. And this one, and I, I just started following, like, I, she's a well known dyer, I guess, because I start because she has a bunch of followers. And I'm like, I had this in, in my possession. <laughs> um, her, the yarn dyer is a Primrose Yarn Co. This, it's the ultimate sock mini scheme. This one's called Don Draper. If, are any of you Don, uh, Don Draper fans? Mad Men fans? <laughs> it's Mad Men, right? <laughs> I've seen a couple episodes, but my, but I, I never, I never um, got past the first couple episodes. My husband watched the whole seasons and just watched it without me. So I don't know if I'm not interested in Mad Men. I don't know. Maybe I'll give it another try. Because usually the first seasons is just, it's just like the pilot, I guess. But then it gets better like Buffy get past the first season then it gets better I like the first season but some people hate the first season but anyways <laughs> Buffy fans you, you know what I mean it's really pretty though very icy or maybe that's what icy because isn't that his like thing I don't know another one this one's <laughs> this one's called I'm laughing because this one's called so fetch <laughs> you know mean girls best movie ever <laughs> Yeah, so fetch. And this one's called, <laughs> I got mixed up. I'm going to read it. Bay Bay, as in by the bay, like by the bay, and then bay, bay bay. <laughs> this is really, really pretty. So I'm glad I found these. <laughs> I also want to know, 
what should I do with this yarn? <laughs> okay, this one's like uh, um, 170 yards. And then, you know, mini skeins. Each of them are 20, 20 gram skeins. What sh do you think I should do with this? Do you, do you have any suggestions of what pattern to make with these? Should I just keep this separate from these or make them together or make some sort of cowl with it ah. or keep it for socks? What do you think? Because these are really good colors. I do like the Don Draper, so fetch and Bebe. <laughs> what do you think? Let me know in the comments. Separate, separate, together, socks, cowl. Let me know. Because I don't want, I want this to be, I want this to be at a, on a great project. <laughs> Let me know. And then last but not least, I am entering a knit along, a cowl that Pippin Pin is hosting. <clears throat> that Pippin Pin is hosting. I don't know if, um, I highly suggest you watch her podcast. She also has an Instagram, uh, it's Pippin Pin. And uh, recently on Instagram, she said that she's gonna do a summer cowl. So any patterns, her design, cause she also, she's also a designer, which I love all her designs. So I highly suggest you check her out too. I also mentioned her um, uh, shirt that I wanna make from, actually from her design actually. It's called the Mount Pleasant. I mentioned, I think about two or one or two episodes. I mentioned before that I wanna make from this yarn. It's so pretty, so pretty. Mom Pleasant Top by Pippin Pin. And by chance, she's doing a cowl. So I'm gonna enter a cowl. So I'm so excited because I messaged her. I, I, I messaged her asking if it has to be her patterns only or it could be other patterns as well. And she said it can be any pattern. So if you wanna join in the cowl, I suggest you follow her and get all the info. She does have some of her um, designs uh, on Ravelry at, on a discounted rate just for the weekend, I believe, or just past, I'm not sure. <laughs> but, but since it wasn't on Ravelry, I was gonna go with a different a different top called the Wild Wind by Woolen Pine, which is such a pretty top, I already paid for it. But then she messaged me saying that the Mount Pleasant top is on Lovecraft. So if anyone wants to um, knit up that design, you should go on lovecrafts.com. So I'm super happy, so I'm gonna purchase it off there. but. The wild wind top though, I'm gonna make that top. I just had to find the, the right yarn for it. Cause this will look pretty with that top as well. But I think I'm gonna um, keep this yarn for the Mount Pleasant top. But yeah, I said, highly suggest you um, check out the patterns, the pip and pin and wool and pine. So yeah, that's what I'm, so yeah, I'm excited to enter the cowl. I think it ends up to like end of August. I have so many things to do <laughs> anyways, but I'm gonna work on it here and there. So hopefully I'll be able to to finish it by by then. So yes, I urge you to check it out. So that's it, pretty much. Yeah, I showed you all what I'm working on. Um, I'm still quite busy with all the knits and crocheting stuff that I need to make for other people. But at least I enjoy what I do. There's a couple times where I'm like kind of burnt out. There's burnout. There's kids. This is busy, busy, busy. But I'm trying my best. I'm only one person. I also try to keep my um, my wrist from breaking because if you knit and crochet a lot you tend to I, I had or have tendonitis it hasn't been flaring up lately but sometimes I do have to take a break from knitting always take your breaks always do your stretches um, I highly suggest you follow an Instagram account her um, I'll put her Instagram name her Instagram handle on the bottom because she's a physical therapist but she does uh, suggest things to do if when you're knitting if you're sitting in the wrong position or you need to like strain your or stretch your neck and all that stuff she does really have good tips for for stretches and how to feel better after knitting and crocheting for so long so i highly suggest you check her out yeah there's nothing interesting about my life um right now all i all we do is go to the arboretum for the majority of the time my husband and i have really gone into watching the crown do you watch the crown did you like it did you hate it i love it we're on season three right now i'm also we watch i watch like the show like three three or four times a year, pretty much. <laughs> but it's like, you know, the things, especially going through the pandemic, you're trying to go with the familiar things you know, because you know the outcome. I've seen like those uh, those uh, things that people share. You, when you watch a cup, watch when you watch shows a bunch of times, it's like comfort to you, which this show is actually a real comfort for me because I know what to expect and I love the show so much. It's my favorite, if you know what I'm talking about, because <laughs> I mentioned it before, but I love Buffy the Vampire Slayer. It's my favorite show. Um, I'm on, I currently, I'm on season three, episode three. I love it so far. Um, 
Are you a fan of Buffy? If there are any yarn dyers out there, and if you're a Buffy fan, you should do um, colorways that are Buffy inspired. I'll totally buy that. <laughs> I forgot to mention I'm actually involved with another podcast. It's actually, um, it's me and my husband. We do a podcast. Have you ever heard of the 10th Kingdom? Anybody? Anybody? Ring any bells? <laughs> it premiered like in the, um, in February of 2000. And it's with John Larroquette, um, Ed O'Neill, Diane Wiest, Kimberly, I'll put her name down below because <laughs> I completely forgot her name. I think that's it with the well-known actors, but I highly suggest, if you have Amazon Prime, it's on there, but it's a really good fantasy film. It's kind of mixed in with like um, like fairy tales, uh, those nursery rhymes, because there's Snow White, there's Cinderella, there's mentions of Little Bo Peep. It all focuses on uh, a father or daughter and they travel through a mirror and they travel to a different world, like a fantasy world. Somehow they lost a mirror and the whole time they're trying to go home, but it's a, it's a really good miniseries and um, she's at, um, and I highly, highly suggest you watch it because if you watch it, then you can listen to our podcast. So we, what we do is we talk about, we watch 45 minutes of the show and then we talk about it pretty much. So we're called The Witch's Pocket and um, subscribe to us on our podcast because I think we're I think we're good I think <laughs> we got some listeners um but yeah that's what our that's our side project it's fun to do we don't mind doing it and we're you, know, you can stream us via um Spotify Apple podcast anywhere you get your your um your podcast where you listen to what you like we're on everything Google Anchor what have you but yeah that's what I do I know, I like podcasting like what I'm doing now. It's really, really fun. And um, I never thought I would do this because <laughs> I'm, I'm an introverted person. I'm really shy. But this is pretty, it's, it's fun. I like it. But thank you so much for dropping by though. This is it. I'm done. Um, hopefully I can have a new episode done in a couple weeks or so. Hopefully. I don't know. I'm going to do what I do and record when I record. Um, like I said, I'm more active on Instagram, so you can check on my projects later on on Instagram. Follow me at LightDevNits. Thank you for returning viewers. Thank you so much for dropping by. I really appreciate it, you guys. I, I'm, I'm serious, because um, it's like it's, it's easy to compare yourself to other, other podcasts and say like, oh, they have a thousand subscribers. What am I doing wrong? But I mean, it's easy to, to get disheartened sometimes, but I don't know. I enjoy what I do. I enjoy what I do. I'm just glad I have subscribers, <laughs> more than one subscriber. <laughs> I'm just happy with that. And I'm just very, very, very thankful for you guys for subscribing to my channel and watching this episode. Um, I hope you find some interest in it. I'm just glad that I, um, that you dropped by. Thank you for returning viewers. Thank you for um, new viewers and. Um, I really, I just really appreciate it. Thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs> so though, so if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. Please like my video, and there's, I think there's, there's a little notification bell. So whenever I get my a new video up, it will notify you that I have a new video up. But I hope you're having a good day. Hope you're having a good week, a good weekend. Whenever you're watching this, happy knitting. Bye.